Sorry about that. My camera, um, actually my phone ran out of storage. And so I got stopped rather abruptly. So this is part two of my Q&A. And it's gotten a little darker. It looks like it might rain outside. So I'm losing what little bit of light I have. But hopefully you'll be able to do this. I think I pretty much finished... Um, I was answering what do you use to glaze your pieces and I think I pretty much finished that. If you have any questions or about that, you, you be sure and leave a comment and I'll be happy to expound on it a little bit better. Excuse me. Uh, next question. What types of tools do you use? Clay, cake decorating, painting, scrapbooking? I use everything. I mean, I use um, tools like mechanic tools, I use clay tools, I use cake making tools, um, cutters you can get over in the Wilton section at Michael's. Uh, I have um, a set of flower making fondant, flower making tools that are Wilton that I got uh, to use to make flowers, of course. And uh, I mean, there are so many, there's everything I look at, and you'll get to be the same way too if you aren't already. Everything you find, you say, how can I use this with polymer clay? And it just kind of evolves that way. And Harbor Freight is one of my favorite places to go. I can walk around in there and find all kinds of things, whether it's storage. That's where I got these boxes back here that where I store my, can my clay. Um... They just have wonderful things there. So, I mean, between storage and actual using using tools, I use just about everything. Uh, what type of plastic eggs do you use? And I think this was on the rainbow twist egg that I showed. Um, I may still have it out here, as a matter of fact. I do. It's on this. If you listen... I don't know if you can hear it or not. There are some glass beads inside of here. But this is my rainbow twist. And this was one of my videos that I did. And I mentioned that you could get plastic eggs, usually after Easter. They're, they're cheap anyway. But I just get cheap plastic eggs. I don't get the real soft ones. I'm just a little iffy about the real... Some of them are thinner than others. The ones I have gotten in the past are kind of nice, thick, plastic, substantial plastic eggs that pop open. They pop in half, and you fill them with candy or whatever for Easter egg hunts. But you can get them at Michael's and places like that after after Easter for little or nothing. But that's what I use. Oh Well, I say that. I haven't used it but once because I've only made three eggs. One of them was plastic. One of them was real, and this one is real. So, you know, you just use what you have. I do understand that some grocery stores uh, at Christmas time, I mean at Easter time, will have cleaned eggshells available. I'm not sure. I think somebody said maybe Kroger had them, which is a store that's in my area. Um, let me see if I can get some light over here. Is that a little bit better? Um, what is your Facebook name? Well, my main Facebook page is my name, Gail Osborne Thompson. And then I also have a clay page, which is got clay, of course, but the O is not an O, it's a zero. And I usually put those in my in the description box uh, under my videos so people will know how to find me. I also sell, if anybody's interested, a very, very good holistic uh, dog and cat food called Life's Abundance. And if you have any questions about that, I would be more than happy to send you some information. It is the most awesome food, and it's delivered right to my door and my dogs are healthy. I've got three greyhounds, and they are 11, 12, and almost 13. The one, one will be 13 in October, and then, you know, 
but she, right now I have one that's 11 and two that are 12, which are seniors, but they are doing fantastic. And they've got gorgeous coats. They don't poop a lot. But anyway, that's away from polymer clay. Um, where did you get the Mona Lisa Platinum Powder? Oh, man. This is the most awesome powder, and this is it. If you can see it in the light, it's made by Mona Lisa that also makes the um, metal leaf, gold leaf and silver leaf. The good Mona Lisa leaf is, is all what usually available somewhere. And this is called metallic powder, and this is the platinum. And I have tried finding it online and can't find it anywhere anymore. I happened to find this at um, AC Moore. And it, like I said, it was with their metal leaf products. And he told me when I bought it, they only keep one in stock. So when I bought that one, they would bring in another one. When I found, I mean, the powder lasts a long time, but when I found that it was not available anymore, I went back to AC Moore, and I was really lucky that they had not only that, but they also had the gold powder, which I think is also discontinued, um, for $2 a piece. They had them on clearance, so they won't be getting any more, so I bought both of those, so I will have platinum and gold probably for the rest of my life. If you want it, I'll leave it to you in my will. Um, what is the surface you work on? Well, under all of this is a walnut hollow glass mat that's got a grid on it. Uh, so, and it's got angles. It's got the you know inches and everything. It goes down to like a quarter quarter of an inch, and it's got a place on the side where you can keep little. Little tools, little, you know, that's where I stick, like, my pen. It's got two little wells here where you can put things like your blade, paper clips, uh, tea pens, anything little that you like to keep close by. And I have it sitting on one of these white uh, non-stick surfaces, like you can get at Dollar Tree. I got it, you know, in white and just cut a piece so it wouldn't slide. The only problem is when I started doing videos with all of the grid lines on there, it was difficult to see the clay when I was working on the clay. So I put my white ceramic tile on top. So I've just left it there. I, at first I was taking it off when I wasn't videoing and putting it back on. And I said, this is just too much trouble. I'm just going to leave it here. So right now as what you see is on a white ceramic tile. I think it's a 12 by 12 tile or 11 by 11. No, it's 12 by 12 ceramic tile that I bought at either Lowe's or Home Depot. So um, the nonstick surfaces are good, but when you're cutting your clay, it will cut those mats. And eventually they're not going to be smooth anymore. So it's going to leave marks like on the back of your clay, which won't be a big deal unless you're making something like a pendant and you want a pretty back. Once those marks get on, on them, it's really hard to get them off, you know, in the clay. So uh, I figured glass or ceramic was the way to go. Um, what brand of clay do you prefer to work with? Well, that's sort of a double-edged sword because my absolute favorite clay is Cato Poly Clay. I love the colors. I love the mixability. I love the strength. But it is a little harder to condition than Primo or any of the other clays. Um, as I've gotten older, and I, I've gotten, I'm getting there, but as I've gotten, old, gotten older, I have not wanted to spend so much time conditioning clay, and it was harder on you know, my grips and everything to condition the clay. And uh, a lot of my clay is old, so it's even firmer than it normally would be fresh out of the package. And, but I still, I have a lot of Cato clay here. I, I bought it, I used to buy it by the 12 ounce block and used it up and would buy more. We had someone in the guild in Florida that sold, was a distributor, so we could get it at, at her price. We would do a big group order. And, uh which is an idea for some of you guilds. If a lot of you get together, you can order 
large sizes and pay a, a pretty good price. But in my videos, mainly I'm using Primo. I don't have anything against Primo. I just, I just start, I started, like I said I, before, I started with the Sculpey 3. Sculpey 3, I, as I tried to work with it, just was so, so soft. And, I, and it just didn't do well for me and the applications I was using it for. So I switched to the Kato. And then when I stopped doing my clay and came, started coming back to it, a lot of my clay was packed up. So I bought Primo at Michael's back when you used to have a buy one, get one free or half price. Now they don't do that. Now it's like you buy one and get one 50% off is about the best sale I've seen lately. But sometimes they used to sell it even for a dollar a block. So I started buying Primo, and I like Primo. Uh, Polyform or uh, Sculpey has been really good to the polymer clay people. They have provided clay for work clay, clays for workshops and just really supportive of the National Guild and the International Guild. And so Primo is what I buy now and probably will. And, you know, I'll use the Cato for projects that I'm doing on my own and continue to use the Primo in my videos. I, like I said before, the only way I use Sculpey 3 is if it comes to me as free. Um, there are some clay uh distributors out there that if you buy a certain amount of money a certain amount of clay they will send you three free Sculpey 3s or whatever and I have those and I use those up in projects that don't make a difference I do know that I have mixed Cato and Primo and came up with an amazing clay it's a shame they can't work out some kind of a deal um, they both cure at the same time temperature but the Cato is so much stronger when it's cured and and the Primo has got gorgeous colors and it it looks nice when it's cured but if you mix the two together you have a fantastic clay all clays are different but if you mix those two together they're wonderful um, the only thing I only caution I would give you is if you are mixing a translucent or a white that you lean more towards the Primo um, if you're going to continue to bake at 275 because the, if you bake at 300 like most Cato clays cure at then you're going to yellow the clay if there's Primo in it. So if you're going to be doing whites, I would lean more towards the Primo as far as the larger percentage. Maybe do 60% Primo and 40 Cato or 70% Primo and 30 Cato. That way you'll still get the strength of the Cato and the, uh, you won't get the yellowing as, at the higher temperatures. Um, what are your favorite things to make with polymer clay? Just about anything that comes to mind. I've, when I first started with polymer clay, everybody was doing jewelry. And I am not a big jewelry person. And yet, it seemed like that was the only thing anybody was willing to pay money for. That's the only thing anybody wanted to buy. Everything Everybody wanted to make beads and make canes to make jewelry. So I got into that, and I do love to make canes. That has got to be my favorite thing to do. I love canes. My problem is I'll find a pretty cane that I really love, and then it sits in my stash for years because I don't know what to do with it after I made it, but I sure enjoyed making it. So I think the favorite thing to make with clay for me is canes. And... I've, I, I love, I think I'm going to be doing a kaleidoscope cane pretty soon, a video on that, because those can be absolutely gorgeous. And you can do one with scrap uh, or leftover canes that you've, like I told you, I've got some that I've had for years and years and years. I went to a Lynn Schwarzenberg um, workshop where we made like, it was seven or nine canes out of one base cane and it came oh they were just gorgeous 
And I've still got some of those flowers left over. I've used um, most of them, but I've got most of them used. You know, I've got some left. But um, my favorite thing is canes. All right. And the speaking of canes, how do you store your canes? Well, I have a couple of things. And if I can turn my camera without messing things up, let me show you. All right, this right here is a fishing tackle box, and I've got it sideways, and I bought it at Walmart, and it's got four drawers in it, and these are all full of canes. This is what I started with, and I've got flowers and leaves, and this one, swirls and miscellaneous. I've got geometric, and I've got my name cane and face cane pieces in the bottom one. Well, when I filled all those up, I thought, okay, now what do I do? So I started just wrapping them in my plastic wrap and storing them in big containers. So I was always having to dig through them to find the cane that I wanted to work with. And then after a while, it got to where I didn't dig through at all. They just sat because it was too much trouble to dig through them. But now, if you look here... This is one of this box here I got at Harbor Freight. And it's one of these toolboxes, you know, with the drawers. This has the old uh, Primo colors in it that are open. So I, when I'm going to pull out clay to use for a project, I look there first to see if I have any open. And if not, then I go into my drawer where I have the other stored. But the other one. I incorporated and I'm putting my canes in there and if you wrap your canes to where the like this one if you see this if I have that up at the uh, end up against the clear of the box then I can look at it and see oh there's my green you know uh, bullseye cane and but that's where I keep canes. They're all wrapped in plastic, and then above it is an old um, storage container. And I'm really not sure what it was for, but it's a deep container, and with the dividers. And my larger canes that won't fit in here, I'm putting up there. There's the black and white that I did the other day, and then way up here on top. And this is one of the short ones. I've got some long ones and some short ones. These are ammo boxes that you can get at Harbor Freight. And they're made for bullets, for people that fill their bullets. But look at this. They're perfect to stick your little canes in. And you can see what you can see through the top and see what's in there. And you might recognize some of these canes. Some of these are ones that I did uh, on previous videos. This is one of the Linan Schwarzenberg canes here that is still sitting there. But um, I have these organized. Most of these are either flowers or parts. I have another one over there that has centers. And I've got two more somewhere. I thought I had them there. Oh, here they are over here. They also come in a longer size, and these are also flowers and parts of flowers. So you can see all the canes that I have, and then this one is flower centers. That These are things, swirls and things that I make for flower centers that I left large because I don't know how small I want them, so when the time comes for me to use them, I know I can come in here and see what I've got for a flower center. Or I can make a new one. Whatever. But as you can see, I've got shelves and containers everywhere. But that is how I store my canes. And let's see. What else? How do you get the core adapters for your extruder? Those are wonderful. If you make beads and you're going to string them, you can make the little you as you extrude your bead it'll put the hole in it for you they're wonderful but i use that in my black and white retro cane video and they come in two sets there's two sets of three 
And the small set is one millimeter, two millimeter, and three millimeter holes or cores. And the other one is three and a half, four, and five, I believe. But they're on Amazon, and I will give you the link to that also. Um, when you do go to Amazon, the default... Um, let me turn this up a little bit. Somehow I got tilted a little bit. Uh, the default size when you pull it up on Amazon is the larger set. If you want to do things like the square extruded cane that I did uh, on my video, then what you'll want to do is to get the small set. Otherwise, you'll have a huge hole in the middle instead of the teeny tiny little hole in the middle. So be sure you get the small set, but they will fit your Macon's, the Walnut Hollow, or the Lucy Clay extruder. But they're the core adapters, I think is what they're called. C-O-R-E. But I will put a link to the Amazon link there. But that's the best place to get them. And what are stickles and when do you add them? Stickles is what Sarah introduced me to. And if I could get to them without knocking the camera over, I'd show them to you. But it's in one of these little small squeeze jars, little bottles. And they are a glitter glue, but it's very, very fine glitter. It's not like the craft glitter glue that you find in the stores. This is very fine. And just if, when you have, like when I'm doing mosaic tiles and I have one that it looks okay, but it just needs a little something, take a little stickles and put them on your finger and rub it across. And it adds just enough bling to make them gorgeous. You can also add them as accents. You can put little dots uh, on things, but always use it after your clay has been baked. I don't think that the, the stickles will stand up under the heat. So be sure you do that, uh, that you leave it, you know, put it on after it's baked. And I'm about to run out of time again. Um, and how do you add script to your tiles? I do that a number of different ways. I have uh, stamps that have words on them. I have alphabet stamps. Uh, Tanya Letterman has some marvelous stamps that uh, I used on some of my tiles on my uh, Proverbs 31 uh, box that I did for my daughter-in-law. But this one goes, the words go up and down. These go straight across. I'll put a link to her website. She's got some fantastic um, photopolymer clear stamps that she makes. And she makes them herself, and she's fantastic. I've got oodles. But that's how I do that. And uh, she sells them in her, in her uh, Etsy shop. And the name of her shop is Tanya's Treasures. And it's T-O-N-J-A-S, Treasures. So if you get a chance, check her out. Well, I think I'm going to run out of time here shortly. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I wanted to show you except maybe my baking setup. There's my oven, but you can't see what I wanted to show you. I used the tray that came with my oven. I put a ceramic tile in it, which helps equalize the heat underneath your uh, piece. I put my clay piece on here and this is just an old foil brownie pan or something that I put on top and that's how I bake my things. Everything I bake. If it's taller than this, I just bend this up so it'll fit. But I always tent my polymer clay items. So it's been great. If you have any other questions that you would like to ask me, please feel free to um, you know, to put comments in this video, and hopefully I'll do this again. If I have enough questions, I'll do it again. It's been fun. I wish I could see you like you're seeing me, but have a great day, and I'll be back soon. Bye-bye.